If everyone else stays relatively quiet, no groaning um, at the moment, just breathing. All right, so remember when you're lying there, breathing deep and wide, under your arms, into your back. And as you inhale, allow those roots to swing out to the side. And as you exhale, feel the weight go through your body. And I really want you to try and relax as much as you can. This is not the most relaxing time in our lives. So we're trying to relax, even if it's just for a few minutes on a Tuesday. So as you continue to breathe, Remember to feel the body become heavier and heavier as it sinks down into the mat. And as you continue with the breathing, we're going to start off with our little pelvic tilt. So next time you exhale, your lumbar spine melts down, pushing the lower back gently into the mat, and then releasing through again as you breathe in. So as you breathe out, you're going to tilt back through the pelvis and then release back through again as you breathe in. Breathing out to tilt and breathing into lengthen and do that one more time. Breathing out as you tilt and breathing into lengthen, bringing yourself back into your neutral. Remember, the pelvis wants to be parallel with the floor. You have a feeling of a release or a little space underneath your lumbar spine. Above all, it should feel comfortable. So even if your pelvis is still slightly tilted backwards, as long as it's comfortable, I am happy with that. But whatever way that you're lying there, I want you to keep it still. So now as we breathe out, we're going to squeeze up with the pelvic floor muscles. So as you breathe out, think about drawing up as so you're putting right up towards your navel. And then you release it down again as you inhale. So as you exhale, you draw up, feeling those pelvic floor muscles gently squeezing. And again, releasing it back down. Let's do that two more times. Drawing up with the pelvic floor and then releasing it back down. And one more time. Drawing up with those pelvic floor muscles and again releasing it all the way back down. Lovely. I want you to tilt again gently back through the pelvis, but this time so you can draw those knees one after the other. Gently in towards the chest, hug them in, give your back a little bit of a massage. So you're just going to rock gently side to side. Lovely. Make sure then one hand is on each knee. So as we exhale, we're going to try and draw your knees a little closer into the chest. We're then going to take them away from each other and we're going to roll them all the way around and back into the center, ready to go again. So we draw the knees into the chest, we take them wide and again we circle all the way around and we're really back again to the center. Let's do that one more time. Draw it in, taking it wide, all the way back through to the middle. Let's go back in the other direction. Take the knees wide first and then draw them in. So you're lifting up slightly from that pelvis, bring the knees together and again releasing it down. So remember this should feel pleasant. There should be no discomfort in your lower back. So you make them as big or small as you need to. And we're going to do it one last time. And then once you've brought the knees back together, we're going to take both hands on one knee, keep that leg pulled in, bring the other leg down onto the floor, slide it away, push right out through from the heel, and try to draw the bent leg a little closer in towards the chest. So we're really opening up and stretching through the hip flexors. Just hold it there for a moment as you breathe. And then we're going to swap it over, lengthen leg comes back in. Take the hands on the knee, 
Bring the other foot down, slide it away. Push right out through the heel if you can, as you bring that bent leg a little closer in. So we're really lengthening right through the top of the hip, through those hip flexors. Lovely. Good. Bring both knees back in. Another gentle little rock side to side. And then bring the feet down, one after the other, onto your mat. Good. Okay, so we've got everything back into alignment. We're going to go then straight into shoulder bridge. So, breathing into prepare, breathing out, tilting back through the pelvis, sinking your spine down into the floor. Slowly starting to lead up with your hip bones as we take one bone away from the mat, one after the other, and come up into your bridge. Hold the bridge as you inhale. Exhale, coming back down, upper back, middle back, lower back, and return through again into neutral, ready to go again. Breathing in and out as we tilt, and peel, and roll all the way up and into your bridge again. Breathing deep and wide at the top there. So as you exhale, you can come back down. One bone after the next, and releasing it through. We're gonna be doing this a few more times, so just continue with the movement. If you wanna go a little bit quicker or a little bit slower, feel free, but next time you come to the top, you use your in-breath to float your arms up to the ceiling. They stay there as you release back down again, through your spine, all the way back down into your neutral, and again, floating the arms back beside you. So we tilt, peel, roll, all the way up into your bridge. Breathe in as the arms float to the ceiling, breathing out, releasing it back down. We're gonna do two more of these just because they are so good for you. So there's two more left, tilting, peeling, rolling. Remember, we're working into those glutes as we come up, so we're squeezing into your bottom. That makes the whole movement just that little bit easier. Releasing back down again on that next breath. And we have one more left to go. The difference on this final one will be that we're gonna be leaving your arms reaching up to the ceiling. So once you've brought your body all the way back down, back into neutral, we hold it there with those arms reaching gently up to the ceiling. First thing I want you to do as you inhale is to lift one arm a little higher. Take your shoulder blades away from the mat and then release it down and feel how that shoulder, how the back becomes a little wider. And then on the other side, we lift the arm, lift the shoulder blade, and again, release it down. Let's do that once more on each side. Just feel how that upper back becomes a little bit wider, a little bit heavier each time you release down. Now, once you've done your fourth one, or the same amount on both sides, just feel how that upper back should be heavy and wide. It stays like that. Palms going to face forward. Let's breathe in. And as you exhale, one arm reaches behind you. So remember to take it just as far back as is comfortable. Float it back up to the ceiling as you breathe in. And on the other side, reaching back, stretching through to the fingertips. And again, floating back up to the ceiling as you breathe in. We're going to repeat that again. But this time as the arm goes back, I want the other arm to go forward. So we're stretching away in opposition. And again, we float the arms back up to the ceiling. Other way, we're reaching away in opposition. Floating back up to the ceiling. Let's do that two more times. So remember, this is a little half windmill. You want to make sure you remain in neutral pelvis and you remain with your back 
heavy, wide, sinking down into the floor. But here's something we usually can't do in the studio because we don't have enough space. We're going to go into our full windmill. So you're going to reach one arm forward, one arm back. But now I'm going to start to circle the arms all the way around in opposite directions, reaching them away from each other, bring the arms back up to the middle, and then the other arm reaches back first, reaching it away, circling it round, and bringing it again all the way back up to the middle. So one arm goes forward, one arm goes back, we circle all the way around. This is when you really hope you've made enough space on the floor for those arms. So one arm forward, one arm back, and again, circling it around. Nice, good. Let's do it once more in each direction. I'm presuming it's going swimmingly. That's it, good, lovely, because it's a lovely stretch for your arms, a lovely stretch for your shoulders, all the way across your chest. Good, and once you've finished your final one, you can just gently float those arms all the way back down beside you. Good, lovely. Let's place those fingertips onto your hip bones. We should still have that alignment going through the body and we still have that sense of a lovely wide, heavy back. We're going to go into our knee folds or our little walks this time. So remember you have a full glass of water balanced right in the middle of your belly. You breathe in to prepare. As you exhale, you start to peel one foot away from the floor and you float the knee up so it's directly above your hip. And then as you breathe in, you float it down where it came from and you place it as gently as you can onto your mat. You change to the other side. Breathing out, you float the leg. Breathing in, you release it down. And we're doing this without any stress or tension creeping across your shoulders or your upper back. And we're also doing it without allowing that glass of water to spill. So that pelvis stays completely stable the whole way through the exercise. So we're peeling up on the out breath, releasing down on the in breath. And the slower you make these, the more likelihood that you'll be able to feel, particularly on the way down, how those abdominal muscles have to respond, working against gravity. So they've got to really squeeze. We're going to do it another couple of times, making sure you've done the same amount on both legs. So it's just an out breath to lift, and an in breath to lower. And once you brought your final one back down there, I want you to go back to your first leg and I want you to hold it there in your one leg hundred position. Now we remain in neutral pelvis, but we do want to think of your ribs drawing just slightly closer to your hips. So you're imprinting that middle part of your back. So that feeling of that back sinking down. Please remember, if you're finding that your chin is now looking up to the ceiling, you should have a little lift now underneath your head. That will help with keeping that sense of ribs and hips staying connected. We're going to keep that 90 degree angle underneath the knee. As we exhale this time, we're going to start to drop that foot or heel down towards the floor. You're going to gently tap it down and then as you breathe in, you float it all the way back up. So we're just going to repeat that again on that same side. So it's just opening up through the front of your hip, tapping very lightly onto the floor, floating back up again as you inhale. Out breath to drop. In breath to lift. Let's do that one more time on that side. 
That's good. Bringing it back up. And this time we're going to bring that foot back down where it came from. And then we can do the same on the other leg. Now, even though you're working from a one leg hundred, and this is seemingly an easy exercise, you should actually be feeling quite a lot of work going around your center if you are remaining in neutral. So it's an out breath to start to drop that foot down, an in breath to bring it back up. So as long as you're holding that pelvis completely still, those lower abdominal muscles really should be doing the work. Dropping it down on the out breath. Floating it up on the in breath. We're just going to do that one final time. Dropping it down. And floating it up. Good. And then I'm going to bring the knees one up to the other again into your chest. Hug them in. Give yourself a gentle little rock side to side. Excellent. Good. Okay, let's have a change of scenery, shall we? Let's roll over onto your side. So you want to make sure that you've got a pillow or a cushion underneath your head. That way you can make sure that your head stays aligned with your spine. If you're lying directly down, you put too much pressure on both sides of your neck. So you want to keep that neck nicely lengthened. You can, of course, also use a little pillow or something underneath your top knee if you prefer. Those of you who've got squidgy balls might want to place a little ball underneath that top knee. It's up to you. Underneath they can be long. Both arms are going to be reaching out in front, shoulders are relaxed down your back. Now make sure your head stays nice and heavy and relaxed. No tension again through the neck. As we breathe in, we start to float the arm. And we're going to lift and we're going to take it as far back as you can comfortably go. And then we're going to close it back down again as you exhale. So inhale as we lift and open and stretch and exhale as we release it back down. Nice. Let's do it again. Reaching the arm, opening, stretching, closing it back down on the out breath. I'd like you to do that twice more. Breathing in and breathing out. So it gives your spine a little bit of a stretch just by rotating, but also right the way across the chest and the shoulder, the arm. Once you finish that next one, keeping the head heavy, let's make a circle. Reach the arm up to your ear. Then again, rotate as you bring the arm all the way around and back to your starting position. Do it again, bring the arm up. And then rotating, reaching that arm all the way around. Do it one more time in that direction. In breath and out breath. And we're going to go back in the other direction, reaching down towards your thigh, taking the arm back, and again, all the way around, and back to your starting position. Two more left to go. Lovely. Excellent. And once you've completed your final one, and you've released that arm all the way down. Remember, you're quite happy to leave that block underneath your head or that pillow. Just do so. If it helps to keep your neck relaxed, then keep it there. You can just bend the elbows gently. If you'd rather remove the block and bring your arm underneath your head, that too is absolutely fine. We're going to place your top leg back onto your bottom leg. So remember that nice long line through your spine, which means you should have a little tiny pickup underneath your waist. 
we're going to go into clam. So you've got that little triangle position from your hip, your heels, and your knee. So we breathe in to prepare, and as you breathe out, your top knee will start to lift. And we're going to push it up, and then release down as you breathe in. So we're going to press that top knee up, and then release it back down. So if any of these exercises don't feel comfortable for you, please remember, don't do them. Adapt them if you need to. Leave them out if you'd rather. You can always do a few of the repetitions and then stop. And then you can add a few more later if you wish. The idea of the clown, of course, is to be able to keep the pelvis completely still so we're not dropping back each time so we get that work right in the middle of that top buttock and doesn't it feel good pressing it up and releasing it down we're just going to do it once more pushing it up remember if that is enough you stick to that but if you can if you bring your body weight slightly forward over your knees and then float your feet up so your feet, your heels are now more or less aligned with your hips. And we just repeat the exercise again. So you breathe in to prepare, you breathe out as you lift that top knee, and you breathe in to release. So you press and release, squeeze and release. Squeeze. So four more if you are still with me. Please remember, rest if you need to. Good, three more. Squeeze. And down. Two more. Squeeze. And down. And only those who want to, final one, press it up, hold it there, big breath in. And as you breathe out, we're going to squeeze it in little pulses for six, five, four, three, two, one. Release the knee down, release those feet down, and just give yourself a little rest. Excellent. Okay, we're going to do all that again on the other side. So if you need to alter the position of your pillow, or you need to alter the position of your um, eye line, your sight, then do so. Once you've got yourself down there, remember, nice long line through your spine. If you need to have something or want to have something underneath that top knee, do so. Just helps to bring the knee up a little higher towards the hip, which can be a bit more comfortable. Underneath legs long, both arms reaching out in front. And then when you're ready, we breathe in, we float the top arm, we open, and we stretch it back. And then you bring it all the way back down again as you exhale. So we're breathing into the open, open, breathing out to the Stretching right the way across the front of the chest, the shoulder, right the way through the arm. Nice, two more left to go. Breathing in. And breathing out. Remember, your knee, whether it's lifted or not, stays still, it does not lift away from the floor or away from the cushion or the pillow. All right, so once you've done that final one, let's go into your circles. Bring the arm up to your ear, then rotating, and bring the arm all the way back around. Breathing in, and breathing. One more time in that direction. Then we're going to go back in the other direction, taking it down to your thigh and 
all the way around and back to your starting position. Two more left to go. Good, lovely. And once again, you have finished your final one. You're going to bring your top leg back onto your bottom leg. You're going to make sure you have that nice little triangle position between your hip, your knee, and your heels. We still got the line going through the spine, so you've still got that tiny little pick up underneath your waist. If you would rather do it without the pillow, then lose the pillow. It's quite comfortable to let your head rest down there. All right, so we're going into our clam. Let's breathe in. And as we exhale, we start to press the top knee. And release down as you breathe in. So we're going to press and release. Keeping those hips square. Not dropping back as we squeeze. Lovely, four more to go. And remember, every time you squeeze, put it a little tighter around your center. Reinforce that connection as you squeeze. Lovely, two more times. Press. Please stop whenever you need to. And press, lovely. Once you've released your final one down, bring the weight slightly forward over your knees and then let your feet float up. If you'd rather stick to that first version, then do so. As you breathe out, we then again lift that top knee up and then release down. So we're going to press and release. Press and release. Squeeze, good. Four more if you can. Let's squeeze it up. Nice and squeezing it up. Excellent. Twice more. Press. Good. And if you can, on this final one, press it up, hold it there. Big breath in as you exhale. Little squeezes for six, five, four, three, two, one. Release the knee down. Release those feet down. One or two of you may need to give your bottom a little rub. Fantastic. Good. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of prone work now. So I'd like you to roll over onto your tummy. So when you're on your tummy, you can either have your fingertips together and your forehead resting down onto your fingertips. If you find it more comfortable, remember you can always use a little towel, which you can just roll up and place underneath your forehead. So what we're going to do in this position, first of all, is our little zip. So yes, unfortunately, it's a little bit more work for your bottom, but I know you love it deep down. Uh, it's also good work for your abdominal muscles. But the hardest thing of all of this exercise is to make sure it does not go into your shoulders, it does not go into your neck, it does not go across your back in any way, shape or form. So we start off with the feet and the legs together. We let the heels drop away from each other, so everything is relaxed to begin with. If you're not sure of this exercise, please remember just to watch or listen for the first one. Okay, so we're going to breathe in to prepare. Don't forget, in this position, you're always squeezing through your center. As you exhale, you draw your heels together. You draw your calf muscles together. You squeeze into your inner thigh and you squeeze all the way up into your buttocks. And you hold that squeeze to breathe in. As you breathe out, you try and release your bottom first. You then try and release down through your inner thighs, through the calf muscles, and finally allow your feet to drop wide. So imagine the whole of your lower body is one great big zip. So let's do it again. Breathe in to prepare. Breathe out. 
as you draw your heels together, your calf muscles, your inner thighs, and your buttocks. You are still pulling up navel to spine. Hold it there to breathe in. And breathe out, release the buttocks, release the inner thigh, all the way down again to those heels. I'd like you to do it again, breathing in. And breathing out, heels, calf muscles, inner thighs, glutes, the whole time we're working around the center. Breathing in and breathing out again to release it back down. Now, please remember the only reason I'm lifting my head slightly is so you can hear me more clearly. All right, so we're going to do that three more times. If anybody would like to work a little harder, don't feel you have to, we're going to add a little bit of a lift. If you've never done this before, then don't do it now. Just stick for those, one, for those people who have done this before with a lift. So exactly the same thing. Zip it all the way up, but if you can, you float your legs just away from the mat. You hold it there to breathe in. As you breathe out, release the legs down first and then unzip all the way down to those heels. So we've got two more left. Only those of you who have done that lift before, when I see you, Add the lift now. Otherwise, do it without. All the time using those abdominal muscles. Good, very nice. You've got one more left to go. Zipping all the way up, only floating those legs. If it's comfortable, there is no strain in your lower back. Good. And then once you have completed your final one and you brought it all the way down, you're just going to take your legs a little bit wider. You're going to take your fingertips out from underneath your forehead and rest them on the outside of your mat. And a little bit more familiar, let's go into swan dive. Let's start off small, please. As you exhale, draw up from the center, press down through the forearms, pull forward from the crown of the head, lift the head, lift the breastbone. Try to come to the bottom of your ribs if you can, and then release down again on that next breath. So breathing out, pushing down through the forearms, using those abdominal muscles as you Pull yourself forward, try to get that little bit of extension, and then releasing back down again on that next breath. So same thing here. If you have been in my class physically and done a big movement, please feel free to do it now. If you haven't, however, you stick to this small part of the exercise. So those of you who might be coming up a little higher, remember you've got to then use those buttocks. You have to feel almost as though your legs are pushing away from you as you peel up and you get that extra extension. If it does not feel comfortable, you do not do it. Simple. Pulling forward. Coming up. Only as high as is comfortable for you. And again, releasing. Gently down. I want you to do that one more time. Small, medium, or large. Whatever works for you. Good. Very, very nice. Okay. Once you've released your final one down, if 
If it's comfortable for you, either bring your forearms or your hands underneath your shoulders. You can bring yourself back into a stretch. If that stretch isn't comfortable for you, if you just come back down onto your back and wait for us to catch you up. So if you can get that stretch, it's a nice one just to stretch through your lower back, through the front of your body as well as your upper body. Excellent. Good. Okay, so once you come out of your stretch, let's come all the way back down again onto your back. Now I'm hoping you all have an extra little towel, because if you do, what I would like you to do, and don't worry if you haven't, you, you can either use a small pillow, a towel, um, it's up to you. Um, you don't have to use anything at all, but it does make it a little bit easier. So if you've got a little towel, you're gonna to fold it into a tiny little square, because you can then place that little square in between your knees. Once you've got that in between your knees, you're going to draw your feet together. So feet and knees are now together. Your back is nice and long. We're going to float the arms up to the ceiling. You're going to turn your palms in towards each other and just gently open those arms all the way out to the side and let them rest down onto the floor. Good. So we're gonna go into our hip roll. So we're gonna do it this way today, keeping the knees tightly around the towel and keeping the side of your feet glued together. So let's breathe in to prepare. As you breathe out, start to drop your knees to the side, which means your top foot will lift away from the mat. Your head rolls in the opposite direction to your knees, but your shoulder blades stay firmly down on the floor. You hold it there to breathe in. As you exhale, draw down through the center and float everything back to the middle. So again, we breathe in and we breathe out on the movement. Knees going one side, head rolling the other. Remember to hold it there to breathe in. And then breathing out, we again float it back to the middle. So we breathe in and we breathe out, dropping the knees, rolling the head, breathing in to hold it there, breathing out to return it back to the middle. In breath and out. And we're going to do it two more times. And on these last two times, just see if you can push your knees slightly more forward to the diagonal. So you're really now trying to open up right through the top of that hip. Breathing in to hold it there. Again, breathing out to bring it back to the middle. And remember, this should feel pleasant should not feel uncomfortable. Again, pushing those knees towards that forward diagonal. And bringing it all the way back through again to the center. Good. Holding there, making sure your feet haven't gone too far away from you. I want you to then place your fingertips back onto your hip bones. Good. You've still got your knees wrapped around your towel. If you have a squidgy ball, which is quite firm, you could use that instead for this next exercise if you prefer. But this is fine as long as you've got those knees a little way apart. Because now we're going to squeeze into the towel and we're going to try and squeeze your hip bones together. And then you're going to release. So we're getting a little bit of work into those inner thighs, and we're going to try and squeeze your hip bones together to get a little bit more work around your center as well. And again, release it. So we're going to squeeze on the out breath. 
and release on the in-breath. And again, we squeeze. Good. Let's start to add our extension. So we squeeze and then one foot floats away and you gently lengthen through the back of one of your knees. Release, bring it down as you inhale. Changing then to the other side, squeezing and lengthening. And releasing it back down. Let's see when we do this, how much release we can have across the upper back and across the shoulders. Good, lovely. We're going to do it four more times, or at least the same amount on both sides. Nice. Last two times. Press me away. And releasing down, squeeze and pressing it away. Excellent. When you release your final one down, you can use your little towel, you can use the ball, and let's just bring those knees one after the other in towards your chest. Hug them in, and again, just give your back a little bit of a massage. Good. I'd like you to bring one foot back down to the floor. The other leg is going to cross over it. Now remember, you can cross over at your ankle. You can cross over at your knee. If just doing this gives you a stretch, you just hold it there. Don't have to do anything else. However, if it doesn't, tilt back through the pelvis and draw the legs in towards you. Holding wherever you need to, to keep that leg pulled in and to keep that stretch where you need it, around the hip, around the glutes. All the time breathing. And try to keep the rest of your body as relaxed as you can. Good. Okay, let's release those legs down and cross them so we can do the same on the other side. So again, it could be the ankle over the knee, the knee over the knee. If that gives you a stretch, hold it there. If it doesn't, tilt back through the pelvis, draw those knees in, hold wherever you need to, just to get that little bit of stretch. Breathing in, breathing out, using your breathing to relax the rest of your body. Good, very, very nice. Okay, let's release the legs down, uncross them, and let's take hold of your back. Please do remember, those of you, again, who find that their neck feels a little short when you're doing all these stretches, don't forget, you need to have a little something underneath your head. Okay, let's take the band underneath one of your feet. And lengthen that leg up and away from you. Making sure that the stretch is mainly in those hamstrings. So if it's mainly at the back of your knee or mainly in your calf muscles, bend that knee a little bit more, draw it a little closer in towards you. Either way, you want to feel that stretch mainly in the hamstrings. If you can feel it in the whole leg, even better. 
Your underneath leg can be bent, your underneath leg can be straight, it's up to you and your comfort. I want you just to hold it there for a moment as you breathe. Good. Next time you breathe in, if you release the band slightly, you'll be able to lengthen the toes away from you. And then you're going to draw the toes down and push the heel away from you. So again, we're going to lengthen through the foot as we breathe in. And then we're going to draw down through those toes as we breathe out. Let's do that twice more. So we're just working gently through the ankle, getting a little bit of a stretch through the shin, a little bit of a stretch through those calf muscles. In breath to lengthen, out breath to draw it down and hold it there. So I know one or two of you may have a magic circle. Remember, you can always do this stretch with a magic circle as well, or obviously instead of, if you prefer. Good, nice, all right. Let's release it down and swap it over to the other leg. So underneath leg bent or lengthened, whatever feels more comfortable for you. You can bend the knee if you need to, or you can keep it lengthened, but never lock. You never want to lock out that knee joint. You always want to make sure there's a softness around that joint. Holding that stretch, breathing, and trying to let the rest of your body sink a little bit deeper down into the floor. And then next time you breathe in, release slightly through the band, lengthen through the toes, the ankle, the shin, and then try to draw down through those toes and push the heel away on the out breath. So we're going to breathe in to lengthen and breathe out to draw it down. If that lengthening makes your foot go crampy, don't do it. That's good. Nice. One more time. Gently lengthening. Drawing down. This is your last one. So I want you to hold it there. Pressing that heel up and away. Excellent, good, okay. Let's release it all the way down. Pop your down to the side. Either bring your feet together and let your knees drop wide that away. Or if you can, bring the knees one after the other in towards your chest. Maybe your back can be flat into the floor and let your knees drop away that away. If you've got the legs lifted, arms on the inside of those thighs and add a little bit of resistance. Just holding it there as you breathe. And then just gently start to roll into your ankles. Make a little circle. If you heard that big click, that was my ankle. I'm going to go back in the other direction. Lovely, good. And bring it back to the middle. Give your toes a little shake, a little wiggle, and then bring your arms on the outside of your knees and draw them into the center. Give your back. A little massage, just rocking gently side to side. Good. Bring the feet down one after the other. Let your arms release down beside you. Give yourself a big breath in. And 
and a big breath out as you feel the weight go right the way through the body into the mat. We'll do that one more time, breathing in. Breathing out again, letting that body just release and relax just that little bit more. Good, I want you to then walk your feet together, bring your knees together, drop them to the side, roll your body the same way and just press yourself up into a seated position. Please remember you can do most of these exercises in a seated position if you're finding it difficult to get up, so don't feel you have to. For those of you who can, we will be adding some balance as well. So if you can, I'd like you to come all the way up into a standing position, but I would like you to bring your band up with you. So once you've got yourself all the way up, in whatever way you find most comfortable, so remember, most of this work can still be done seated, so don't feel you have to get up if you don't want to. So I'm pretty sure you all have a band, which is fantastic. So what I'd like you to do is to fold your band in half. Like so. And we're just going to do a little bit of work of strengthening those bones. What is important here is that you keep that nice long line going through from your knuckles through your wrists. So we're not going to take those wrists in that position or that direction. We keep them long. So we're holding the band, hip, uh, hip or shoulder width apart. Let's just relax down in front of you. I want you to breathe in. And as you breathe out, I want you to put a little bit of tension on that band and try to push it wide. It won't go very far. And then you release. And again, we're going to press it wide. And release. One more time. Pressing it wide. And release. Good. Let's bring it up a little higher. And let's do it again. Breathing out. Pressing into that band. And then release. Again, pressing into that back, keeping those wrists long. And release. One more time. Pressing. Good. And release. Let's bring it up so it's just slightly higher than your shoulders. Let's do it again. Press. And release. Press. And release. I know you're loving this. Press. And release. Good. Remember, this is just good for you. You might not like it, but it's good for you. Those of you who can, I'm going to lift it even higher. If that's too much, maybe you can always bring it back down to shoulder height rather than trying to take it higher. If you can, it's lifted again, breathing out as you pull it wide. And release. And again, press it wide. And release. Good. Press it wide. And release. And bring it all the way down. You have one more though left to go. I want you to take the band behind you like so. Still keep the wrists long. You breathe in. As you breathe out again, you push those arms wide. And then release. So again, you press those arms wide. And release. Just one more left to go. Press it wide. Good. And release. And let those arms relax. You can throw your band down to the floor. Either sit or stand up nice and tall. Let's give your shoulders a little roll round. That's good. Nice. Let those shoulders then release down your back. Let's breathe in. And as you breathe out, I just want to turn the head, I want to look over one shoulder. I want you to bring it back to the middle as you inhale, same on the other side, looking over the shoulder, bringing it back through to the center. We're going to repeat that again, looking over the shoulder, but this time drop the forehead slightly down to the shoulder and see if you can sweep the forehead all the way across the chest and bring it up on the other side and go back the other way, forehead to shoulder. Just 
sweep it across. Get that stretch through the top of the shoulders, the neck. Let's do it one more time each side. Sweeping it across. And bringing it up and again. Sweeping it across. Once you have finished your last one, you're going to turn and face forward. And we're going to add a little bend through the knees to stretch into the lower leg. And then let them. A little bend. So if you're in a seated, if you're in a chair, seated position, you can just lift your toes away from the floor and keep your heels down. So just lifting up that way to again get a little stretch into the back of the lower leg. That's good. Dropping down. Excellent. One more time. Dropping down. And lengthening up tall. Let's breathe in as we float one arm all the way up to the ceiling. Circling it around to the side. And the other arm reaches up to the ceiling. Remember, the neck stays long. And again, we open up to the side. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. Both arms at once, reaching, and circling. And again, reaching, and circling. Bring the arms down by your side. We're going to repeat that one more time. But if you can, with a balance. So we're going to come up onto your toes. And release down. On the other side, lifting. And circling once more on each side. Lifting. And circling. And lifting. Here, twice more with both arms. Let's lift. And open and lift and one five or one palm stay facing forward bend the elbows tight into your waist and breathe in to open up through the front of the shoulders and the chest and then close it back in breathing in to open and breathing out to close just one more time breathing in and breathing out, release those arms down with your shoulders. Another gentle roll round and little shake through. Fantastic. Well done, everybody. Very, very nice. If you have to dash off, goodbye. And I'll see you hopefully all.